it's Sharon Armstrong. Today we're going to be doing some not so much watercoloring. I will explain as I go, but this is the card that we're going to be making. I loved it. Bold, bright color girl. I loved how it turned out. If you've not already subscribed to my channel, you can do so below. After you subscribe, make sure you hit the little bell. You'll be notified the next time I upload a video. I'd love to hear your comments on my very bright watercolored card. Here is my bold watercolored card that I absolutely love. I try really hard to do soft muted colors. I can't. I can't. I am using the Humming Along stamp set that is in the Occasions catalog. Um, this is uh, March 2019, so um, I have a piece of shimmery white paper. I recommend either shimmery white or watercolor whenever you're adding water to your paper. I have a big clear block. You could use a paper plate. You could use the inside of your stamp pads. Um, I'm gonna have real red Daffodil Delight Gorgeous Grape uh, Bermuda Bay and Granny Apple Green. I'm using a lot of colors. You don't have to. Um, it's just, I just love color. So first thing you want to do is use the embossing buddy on your shimmery white. And I don't know if you watched my video a couple weeks ago. I did something to this Versamark pad and I was kind of embarrassed. I was like, oh, I should probably order another pad. However, I have found a little trick. When I'm doing videos, you can't necessarily see where I stamp when I'm doing, when I'm using the Versamark pad. Can you see the little pink hue? It's all good. The copper embossing powder that I'm going to be using will cover it up. <laughs> Too funny, right? Let me move this over just a little bit. All right, so I'm trying really hard not to get my head in the camera. Ugh. And then I'm not sure if you can see really well, but I'm going to go ahead and stamp the thank you right at the bottom. I'm using copper embossed powder because it's my favorite. You could use you could use white, you could use you could use gold or silver. But if you know me, you know I'm a fan of copper. And then we want to heat set. The reason that I wanted to emboss instead of just stamping is the embossed is a little raised. It's elegant, but it also helps keep my water and my color inside the lines a little bit better. When you get the aqua painter, uh, there are two, and I like to keep one as clear and one to pick up my colors, all right? So we're gonna add some water. First, we're gonna do our flower. And then I'm going to get my yellow, my Daffodil Delight, and I don't know if you can see how it just kind of runs. And if I would just leave it alone and quit messing with it, it might be more shaded, but I want to fill it all in. Totally up to you. It's your watercoloring when you're doing it. If you're new to stamping and you're afraid to emboss, don't be afraid. Embossing is gorgeous. It's elegant. Um, 
you, you do want to wipe off your aqua painter in between so you don't muddy your colors. I'm just using little makeup rounds. You could use paper towel. You could even um, have some scratch paper here. You just want to make sure that you have a good clean tip. All right, so now we're going to switch over. And I found that if I worked on the flower, then worked on the bird, then worked on the leaves, that my colors didn't run together too much, which is kind of important. Um because I have so many colors going on with this bird, with my hummingbird. We're gonna color his belly, and we're gonna color that real red. I live in Southern Arizona, and where I live is the hummingbird capital in the United States. I couldn't believe it. I was amazed that there were so many hummers at certain parts of the year. Uh, we have hummingbird feeders. Uh, I have a neighbor who feeds, who has like 30 feeders. And one time she asked me to watch her feeders while she was out of town. Oh boy, that was a full-time job. All right, so I got a little carried away with the real red. So a little bit goes a long way. Next, I'm going to jump back over to my leaf. Add a little bit of water. If you're using all these colors like I am, I kind of hesitated because I couldn't remember where my uh, granny apple green was. So just kind of pull a little bit and say, Yep, that's it. Nope, that's not. Then you could clean off your brush and go try another color. All right, we're gonna switch around now. And I'm gonna try to stay away from my red. I'm just gonna add some water to a few of the feathers. And I'm gonna add some green. And this is water coloring, so don't worry if more than one feather gets color on it. I think every time I do this card, uh, it comes out different. All right, again, we kind of want to let that dry a little bit. I am going to come over and wet my... Um, little stamen area here and just get a little bit of red because we know how far that goes. I could have probably gone ahead and colored the red when I did his chest and um, um, his uh, neck. But again, I'm trying to teach you to go back and forth so that the water, the water kind of dries some in between. All right. So, do you want to see what happens if you color all the way into the red? It bled out. It's such a skinny, fine line, I couldn't do it. So, this was my first bird that I was playing with. Just what colors do I want? It's a fun set to play with, I'm telling you. All right, I can pick up my card and I can tell that my greeny apple green is pretty dry. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to color his head, top of his head. And I'm going to come down into this area. And I'm going to, whoops, put that one down. And I want this beautiful Bermuda Bay. I kind of figured out having two colors, two dark colors side by side worked better. And that's him. Let's see. Oh yeah, I want some feathers to be Bermuda Bay. I am holding the aqua painter fairly light so that it's just the tip of it that's touching.
my tip was still pretty wet, so I went ahead and did a few other little feathers there. Now you can see my Bermuda, my, yeah, my Bermuda Bay bleeding into my red, which probably means I just had too much water going on when I added the water, but I still think it's pretty, so. All right, we're gonna go ahead and finish up our feathers. And my other color. I feel like it's bleeding more because I'm trying to hurry for the video. So when you go to make this card, take your time, let the layers, let the areas, um, let them dry really good. So my technique of going from one side of the card to the other side of the card worked really well. And I think it's just, I got a little quick over here just trying to finish up. But you can see how good mine turned out here. I didn't have any bleeding. Um, so just kind of go back and forth, back and forth. And I think your card will turn out more like this one instead of a little bit more run together. But the only place that really bothers me is right there. Everything else just kind of blends together and it's pretty. So I'm good with all of it. You do want to let it dry completely before you add the layers. So we're going to set that aside. I have my layers and all my measurements will be in the description box below. So don't worry about it. Um, I'm gonna add, whoops, must be a new one. I'm gonna add a layer of Whisper White on the inside. Um, you could easily stamp a couple of the leaves right on that corner right there if you wanted to. I have a layer of Daffodil Delight. And I'm gonna add and I'm gonna go ahead and just add my snail to the Daffodil Delight layer because I know this is too wet to flip it over. I really wish you could see this card in person though. The shimmery white is just gorgeous. So pretty close. I got a little dark on my red, which I already explained that. Every time you do this card, it's gonna look different. Now, see, I love my flower on this one versus this one. I don't know, a little bit softer, not as all filled in. I'm happy. I love hummingbirds. Let me know what you guys think. I'm sure that every painter out there that does watercoloring is cringing at my um, watercoloring technique, but it made this card so simple to make and color, and I love it, so. Happy Stephen, y'all!